Just a quick note that a portion of today's video is sponsored by Weather Honey. It's, it ships. We've got my 18 foot seal deck open car trailer here in the shop. I've had this trailer for about five years now. I got a really, really good deal on it. I think people were scared of it because the whole thing was surface rust when I bought it. I mean, literally it was all just an even coat of rust. So I got it, I cleaned it up, I painted it. I did some upgrades to it along the way and I've had it ever since. And I mean, it is solid. It's the most solid trailer I've ever owned. Everything side on it. You can walk on the fenders. Uh, it's the right size, the right length. I uh, really, really, I'm very fond of this trailer. But ever since we got my 32 foot gooseneck, it's kind of short enough to get in a lot of places. It has all the stuff in it already. This trailer hasn't been used much except for kind of recovery missions, going and buying cars, things like that. And for that kind of stuff, it's not really ideal the way it is currently. And just in general, there's a lot of stuff I've wanted to do to this thing for a while, as well as just making it look nice again. It looks very, very rough at the moment. That being said, that's what we're getting into. We got a whole box of parts plus some other stuff. So I'm gonna quit your jabbering and we're gonna get straight to work. All right, so first things first, I don't even remember everything I have for this thing. So we're gonna pull everything out of this box here. These came with the ATC. This is a relay kit for the lights. All right, well, as you can see, there's a lot to unpack here. We have a lot of stuff we've got a winch, that's one of the bigger improvements that we're gonna have on this. You know, a lot of times, rescue missions, cars don't run. If we buy a rolling chassis, things like that, we need a winch, It'd be very helpful. We got a solar panel to keep the battery charged. We got a battery box and the battery out of the enclosed to put in here. We need a battery to run the winch. Uh, we got some lights. We've got a new wiring setup, a new distribution box with a new plug. Uh, this one I did a long time ago and I did not do the best job. Um, it's still working, but now all the wiring needs to be replaced because it's all chafing and brittle and there's a lot of stuff. There's a lot of stuff going on here that we have to do before we can even get to painting, cleaning, and all of that. So we're just gonna start putting pieces on, <laughs> redoing things, all the good stuff. So let's get into it. All right, well, actually we've got a little break from the rain. So we're gonna take a break from the trailer and knock out a project I've been meaning to do for a few days now, but the rain has not been very cooperative. So our new Ram tow rig here is a little bit dirty on the inside here. We did a quick clean when we got it, but we've already been on a couple of trips with it. It's gotten dirty, it's gotten gross, but more importantly, this truck has real authentic leather. That's part of the uh, Longhorn Edition. It's one of the neat things about this truck, but if we want this to last, we have to take care of it. Now, fortunately, the previous owner did a good job taking care of it, but we're gonna have to kind of carry that torch and continue taking care of it unless we want it to just fall apart and deteriorate. So to do that, we have some great products from today's video sponsor, Weather Honey. So 
Weather Honey's been doing this since 1968. They are the most trusted leather cleaner and conditioner brand on the market. They've got like 50,000 five-star reviews. They make a great product. This is one of those products that, that recommendation gets passed down for generations kind of thing. So we've got their leather care kit. So this comes with the cleaner, the towel, and the conditioner. But more than that, we have their UV protectant. Now this is nice because this truck has leather on the dashboard and uh, the dash gets blasted by sunlight. So this will help protect that. And then their leather care wipes. Now the reason we have these is because it's not just for real leather. It does work on all colors and types of real leather, but it also works on faux leather, vinyl, and plastic. So we can use it on pretty much the majority of the interior of the truck, kind of a one-stop shop to clean it all up and get it nice looking. So that's where we're gonna start today. We're gonna get it cleaned up with the wipes and then start working on cleaning and conditioning the leather. This stuff wicks down into the fibers so it lasts about six months per application so we won't have to do this again for a while keep everything clean and protected for uh, several trips to come so i'm gonna quit jibber jabbering and get to cleaning so for the wipes we have cleaning and conditioning wipes so for cleaning the gist of the interior getting the plastic stuff all the gunk the spilled drinks all that nonsense off we're using the cleaning wipes and then we move on to using the leather cleaner and the leather care kit to clean up the leather and get all the gunk and grime out of it all right what well, we've let it dry so now we have a fresh towel and our leather conditioner so we went to town on conditioning the leather this truck has a lot of it it's on all four door panels it's on the dash it's on all the seats so we've got a lot of work to do a lot of uh surface area to cover but i really love the interior of this truck it's super nice it's in good shape and we got to put a little elbow grease in to make sure it stays that way for the long term man what a massive difference that made you could probably even see on camera it didn't realize how dry all this leather was until I started conditioning it and it just sucked that leather honey right in. It needed that moisture, otherwise it gets hard and brittle and cracks. So I'm really, really glad we, get, we did this and got this done now. But yeah, this stuff works like a charm. If you're interested in seeing all the ways that Leather Honey's cleaner and conditioner can help prolong the life of your leather, click the link down in the description and use code TAYLORRAY20 to get 20% off your Leather Honey Leather Care kit. So with that being said, huge shout out to Leather Honey for sponsoring this video and keeping my truck's leather nice and minty. It's time to get back to work on the trailer side of things. So the first order of business was to get the battery mounted and installed. So we test fitted the box in there with the jack. I'd like to be able to still keep the jack in here. Obviously putting the battery in here, we're gonna lose a lot of space for a lot of the other things, but we need this battery to power all the newfound electronic stuff that we're gonna be adding to this trailer. So we went ahead and got that mounted. Josue started working on getting the winch mounted, which is the main thing we need to power. And I started working on swapping out some of our electronics. I swapped out the breakaway battery, been meaning to replace that for a while. And Josue started drilling the holes to mount the winch. So once we get it mounted, we can wire it. So while he was over there drilling the holes, getting the mounting plate prep to get it secured to the trailer, I started working on the wiring side of things. So we've got to mount the control box. I decided to mount it in the trailer toolbox as well. It's another thing that takes up space, but on the flip side, it keeps it out of the weather, keeps the wiring all contained, and it looks nice and clean, which, you know, is kind of always the goal. So once we had confirmed which pair of wires went where by testing the winch out firsthand, because who looks at instruction manuals, uh, we got to work on final assembly. So Josue's working on mounting it, I'm working on wiring it. So I need to get these wires written through the back of the box. We're going to try to keep these super, super tight in this hole, use a nice grommet, keep everything sealed as best as possible, keep weather from getting into the toolbox, but also to keep the wires from chafing if they were just going through bare metal. So once I got everything sorted out on the winch side, I could start working on the battery side. Now these are the extra long cables, so we're gonna have to cut these to length and then switch out the ends on them. The ends that came on them were for a much smaller post. We're using a big old deep cycle battery, so we had to switch those out and that was pretty well done and dusted. So then we could move on to wrapping up the wires that go outside of the box just to keep them protected and make it look a little nicer. And then the rest of the trailer wiring. As I said, this is a bit of a mess. I did this a long time ago and I kind of rushed it. I, I didn't use the best of materials and it needs to be redone and that's why we're redoing it. Now it has lasted several years and it's worked, but it's not ideal, it's not optimal. The wire's dangling down, it's, it's just a mess. So we're tearing it all out, we're starting new. 
So we needed to get this thing jacked up and put on jack stand so we can more easily roll around underneath it and route this wire and get it nice and secured and up out of the way so it doesn't flop around and dangle and do all the things that the old wiring did that's prompted us to replace it and do all new wiring. So we're head deep in this project. There is no turning back now. We won't have a working trailer until we finish this. All right, well, we are plugging away on this thing. We've got the winch mounted and secured. We've got it wired up. Got a nice little grommet there going into our box. Battery box is mounted, batteries in the box. You can see our wires here for the winch. We've also got our wires coming up from our distribution box. We've got a new one of those mounted. You can see our new lead here. So we're gonna make that longer to better work with the full size trucks. When I did it originally, it was I was towing with the, the green truck. So we've also got, one thing I decided to do this time is get a seven wire sleeve, basically just like that lead to run to the back of the trailer. So it's nice and protected and out of the elements. So we're basically rewiring the entire trailer with the exception of these side marker lights. They are kind of a pain to wire and we'd have to split that loom apart, you know, every two feet. So we decided to just leave those, but we're replacing everything else. So Josue's well, got it routed back to here. Right now he's working on splitting it off to the brakes. The wires to the brakes were getting pretty brittle and torn apart. So the brakes were not working intermittently. So that'll be nice to have brakes back. It's not a huge deal when you're towing it with a dually, but still nice to have trailer brakes. So he's working on that. Uh, I'm gonna start working on some fab projects. The first of which being our jack up here. This is one of those, uh, I'll get to that really soon. And uh, it's been like three <laughs> three years, um, but I'm gonna build a foot for this jack. Now, I could weld just a foot on, so it's not a circle. However, I'd like to make it adjustable because then we could get rid of having to use a block like this. So we're gonna try to make a slide in deal that we can pin at different heights to jack the trailer up. We're also gonna replace these safety chains. So anyway, jibber jabber. Josue's wiring, which is normally my job, but I, I've got to do some fabrication stuff. So I've got some scrap material I pulled out. I'm hoping I can make this work. I'm gonna to have to get a little creative here. Uh, we'll see if my plan works. I'm gonna try it, see what happens. So you know the deal, <laughs> let's get back to it. So the tube on the jack that this is going to slide into has basically an indentation that's meant to keep the inner tube straight and square so it can't twist around, spin around, end up backwards, those kinds of things. So that's what I need to recreate here. And I'm trying a couple of different approaches. I had an idea in mind, but it wasn't really working like I wanted it to. So we switched to a different method on the belt grinder. Basically, I'm just gonna grind it flat. Instead of trying to grind a matching V groove in it, I just need to flatten out one side so it'll slide in. This piece of scrap metal is pretty much the perfect size, which I'm lucky on because I don't have any other material like this. So that worked out really well. We were able to get that to fit. And now it's time to move on to the foot side of things. So we're using this quarter inch plate. It's six inches wide. So we just cut it into a square, six by six. Pretty much the perfect size for this. We got it cleaned up on the belt grinder and then bent the little corner feet into it. All these jacks seem to have this just so it doesn't get dug into something. And uh, you know, it's just one of those uh, little touches. It's uh, pretty satisfying to do. So now we just need to center the tube on the foot plate, get everything tacked on, make sure it still fits. And if it does, then we can go ahead and weld it out. So it's time to weld this thing. This is an awkward thing to weld because the tube is stainless. I don't even know where I got this tube from or why I have it, but I have a stainless tube. <laughs> so we're welding stainless to mild steel. I have specific TIG rod for this, so it's not a problem, but it's one of those things. It's, it's not the easiest to weld. It's a little bit odd. So once we get it all welded up, We've just got to drill our height setting holes. You know, we want a few settings, so this will work on different trucks and different trailers, but we're also drilling through some very thick stainless steel. So I'm not trying to drill any more holes than I have to, just enough to get us by and get the job done. So we got them all drilled in there. We went back with the countersink tool just to clean the holes up, and then it was time to test it out and see if we drilled the holes in the right spot, if it slides in, if everything fits, if the jack's oriented correctly, you know, all the usual. So the top hole's a little bit of a fight. It's not fitting perfect. The rest seem to. So I wanted to test it out and make sure it worked in the top hole setting, and then if it does, we'll just go ahead and clean that hole up. So. We take it back apart, clean that hole up until it goes in nicely, and then it's time to throw a fresh coat of paint on this thing and call this portion of the project done and dusted. So 
We're gonna let that dry. In the meantime, I'm gonna go ahead and cut these old rusty safety chains off. These are not only an eyesore, but they're a little bit too short and the hooks are a little bit too small to hook on the full-size truck receivers. Oh, so good. Mint, got the pin and everything, let's go. I, mean, I should have painted it gray, but uh, you know, one of those things. Man, I've wanted to do that for a long time. <laughs> oh, that's funny. All right, well, that is done and dusted. Pretty dang pumped on that. I mean, to do that for so, so long, and it came out really good. So with that out of the way, we're almost done with the wiring as well. We've got to secure this lead. We've got to hook up the last middle brake light in the back back there. And I think that's pretty well wrapped up. So what I wanna do now is get this thing pulled out and pressure wash it. As you can see, it is absolutely filthy from sitting and just getting blasted by rain and sand. And I wanna get this thing painted today. The only way we can paint it is if it's clean. So we need to get it washed off, rinsed off, give it time to dry so that then we can tackle painting it later once we're done with the last few odds and ends. So I'm pretty pumped. This should be a massive transformation, but first things first, I gotta get this thing completely cleared off so I can pull it out into the driveway and get it cleaned up. All right, well, this is a good example of how hot it is in the sun here in Florida. I washed this thing less than 10 minutes ago and it is bone dry. I mean, it is front to back dry, even in the shaded areas. I did not expect it to dry that fast. We got it looking like an episode of Dexter in here. We got plastic on the floor. We've also got this canvas drop cloth on top of that. We're trying to be 
very thorough and <laughs> make sure we don't get any paint on the floor. But we've got what we need to get masked off, masked off. We've got it cleaned up. We are pretty well ready to slap some, a new coat of paint on this thing. I'm pretty excited about this. Um, we're using roll-on paint, this Rust-Oleum enamel. I think I got this at Lowe's, maybe? Lowe's or Home Depot. This is the same stuff I used when I painted the trailer originally. It worked really well. I mean, all things considered, it's held up well. I mean, I've done burnouts on the trailer. I've, I've not been nice to it, so just freshening it up. I give her a, a new lease on life. So anyway, I'm gonna quit jibber jabbering and we're gonna get to painting. This should be pretty, uh, pretty satisfying little transformation here. No. So it was time to go to town and paint this thing. Now, fortunately, this roll-on paint goes on a lot faster than spraying it with spray cans. I don't know, I, I don't wanna know how long it would take us to spray this thing with spray cans, but luckily with the roll-on, we've got two rollers and then Raldo's got a brush. So me and Josue are tackling the deck, the main surface, the area that we need to get painted while Raldo is getting in kind of the cracks and the crevices and all the odds and ends. But this stuff goes pretty quick. I mean, a trailer is about as simple of a thing to paint as you could possibly paint because it's just one big flat surface. But there are still some little cracks and crevices you have to get into with the brush and pay attention to what you're doing and make sure you don't miss spots. The, the worst is when you go through a paint job like this, you finish it, you let everything dry, and then you realize you missed a spot. So we're trying to be thorough. And I mean, I even went back with the roller and worked on doing a second coat, just trying to burn through this gallon of paint, but yeah. So we're all doing this way, working on the cracks and crevices. I'm working on finishing the main cover and the second coat. And with between the three of us, I mean, we are absolutely flying through this. You know, it, we started and the next thing I knew, the trailer's got a pretty much a full even coat of paint on it. So just going back over everything, making sure we're not missing any spots, trying to get all those little small pieces and double coat where there's going to be a lot of wear, you know, where the tires are going, where the straps are dinging around and in no time at all, we had this thing painted and ready to go. And then it was time to let it dry. Now, while it's drying, one thing we wanted to do is also paint the wheels. Now, I painted these bronze years ago to match the bronze wheels on my Duramax truck, which I haven't had for years and years and years. So I wanted to repaint them chrome to match the wheels on either the Dodge or the Fummins, but I didn't have any chrome paint. So we decided to just clean them up, rock them bronze for now, and decide what we want to do later. So while they're drying off, we went ahead and put the safety chains back on, got those bolted back in, the new ones, and then worked on getting the battery hooked up. I didn't have one of these nuts for these battery posts, so I had to run to Ace and get that. And then we could tidy that up, get the toolbox snugged back up, and that all is done and dusted. It's time to throw the clean, fresh wheels on the clean painted trailer and see what this thing looks like as one unit. truck I'm driving so I don't need to have a bunch in here but I mean we can still fit more all right check it out we've got literally everything we need in here and we still got a little bit of room left so we got all of our straps over here our loops over here both short and long which we don't really need to have both in here but why not we got a hammer uh, we've got jack jack handle we got a spare tail light uh, we still got some room to spare I'm stoked on that I was a little worried that with the battery in here all we'd be able to fit was the straps but we still got a little bit of room to grow into it. Toss a few more things in here, like a bearing kit, things like that. So sweet. Boom. All right, last step is to tidy up our 
main power wire here. Get this nicely secured and out of the way. Well, here it is. This is the finished product all painted and cleaned up. Man, what a satisfying, rewarding project. All the wiring's new and fresh. It lasts us a good while. The paint came out really good. You can see just how glossy it is. That's what makes me happy. I really like painting stuff like this glossy, but it's, it's hard to get that finish with spray paint or especially roll-on paint. So it makes me really happy to see it all fresh like this. It's been a long time since this trailer looked this good and it's back and better than ever. So. That being said, we are pretty well wrapped up. I mean, we got everything done. We wanted to get done to this thing. There's one more thing I want to knock out, and it's just like where the ramps slide in. I'd like to do a couple more modifications there, but other than that, we made it through the laundry list of stuff we had planned, so whew, it's hot out. I'm gonna go ahead and end it here. Uh, let me know what you guys think of the trailer upgrades, anything else that you would suggest adding on to it, anything you think I missed, but we got the winch now, we got power. I do want to add some loading lights maybe, but you know, one of those things. I guess it is a never ending list. <laughs> I thought we were done, but anyway, that being said, I'm gonna end it here. Uh, but I do want to say thank you for watching, thanks for subscribing, and that I hope I'll see you next time.